I was nursing our three week old baby the first time I had seen pornography on my husband's phone. And when I saw it, I was completely flooded with so many different emotions. And at the time, I had so many narratives of a worldly view about pornography. Things like all men watch pornography. If you're against it, you must be a prude or unliberated, or you're just really insecure about yourself if you have such a problem with your husband watching porn. It's not that big of a deal. So I had all of these things going on simultaneously with these feelings of deep in my gut, like my heart sank, my heart was racing. I felt so many different emotions. It was really hard to process it all. So I kept all of these feelings inside because in reality, I really didn't know what I was allowed to feel or what was too much or what was really the space between what was okay um, what, what reaction was okay for me to have in that moment. And so I sat on that for a little while and then I finally got the courage to talk to my husband about it. And we were both in the very beginning stages of really finding our relationship with God and our faith. And so I really felt like, okay, I'll just give him the benefit of the doubt. I'll just give a generous assumption and just say, he's still in that worldly view that says it's not a big deal and all guys do it. So I'm going to say all the right things and express my feelings and help him understand that this is really hurtful for me. And whenever I shared it with him, he was very receptive and he said, this is absolutely nothing for you to worry about. I didn't realize it was so hurtful to you. I definitely don't want to hurt you. It'll never happen again. You don't have anything to worry about. So I just let it go. It all went under the proverbial family rug and that's where it stayed until the next discovery, which was about six months later. I had found it again. And then I went through that same process of like trying to tiptoe and find the right words and make sure I don't, I didn't want to shame him. I didn't want to embarrass him. I didn't want him to feel like I looked at him differently. I just wanted him to stop. Like that's all I wanted was just for him to stop looking at it. And I had gone through all these feelings the six months previous, because again, I had found out when our baby was three weeks old of like, well, maybe it's just my body. You know, I just had a, a baby and you know, it's, I'm, I'm not as available for him. So I tried all the things. I tried making sure that I was put together more and more attractive and all these things. And then when I found that again, I was hurt even more. I felt like I wasn't doing a good enough job. I felt like I wasn't being enough and I just didn't understand. And so I took that to him again and he's like, it's not, it's nothing to do with you. It's not about you. It's not about that. And I couldn't understand that. That didn't make any sense. I'm available to you and if and, and I want to be connected to you and if it's not me then why do you keep going back to this and so then the next discovery again because he had said he won't do it again it's like his problem because I had wanted him to get some help and just talk to somebody in our church about it and he just wanted to keep it private and he insisted that he could manage this on his own so I let it go again. It was the same thing again, six months or so later, I discovered it again. At this point, I'm angry. I've already expressed to you how I feel about it, how it feels. It literally feels like cheating to me and that, you know, I'm, I'm accepting your promises that it'll never happen again. And so now I'm angry because it just keeps happening again. And so this time I start Googling pornography and why my husband won't stop watching it. And I started realizing that it's an addiction. And as soon as I started realizing it was an addiction, I, I was just, I was truly, in truth, I was kind of astonished. I had no idea. I had no idea that it was an addiction and that it could take you to such depths. Um, because with any addiction, it typically will escalate into um, just more and more and more and more um, needing to fulfill what is happening for them. Because like any other drug, it's really hijacking their brain. And so this idea that I had of it's just porn or anything like that, all of the worldly narratives that I had, I started realizing that those aren't true. It's not just porn. It is affecting our marriage. It is causing a complete and total disconnect between us 
because it's really about the secrecy and the lying and the hiding and the denying and and there would be a lot of gaslighting and eventually it turned into I was overreacting and making too big of a deal out of it and this was his problem and I didn't need to worry about it and all of those things that caused me to really question myself lose trust in myself not be able to really follow and listen to my intuition because I was constantly questioning my reality and what I should be feeling and how I should be feeling it um, and it was a really hard time for me because I learned that I was constantly abandoning myself trying to make myself more or fit into this box or be a better wife or be more attractive and all the things and I just realized three things um, which is what I wanted to share with you today is that it's not just porn it's not just porn it's so much more than that and it will continue to affect your marriage and destroy your self-esteem and continue to hijack his brain as well because it is an addiction. Um, the second thing that I wanted to share is that it's not about you. There's nothing you can do, say, or be more of that's gonna change him. He's gotta be willing to get the help, to acknowledge it as an addiction, and to be able to say that he wants a different life than that, and that has to be his choice. It's nothing that you can do or say to make that um, just happen. He has to be willing. Um, and then the third one is that it's not going to go away on its own. I learned that myself and I see it time and time and time again within my clients um, and their spouses. And sometimes it's the, it's the wife or the betrayed person that's saying it, it'll go away. Let's just make it all go away and and we don't really want to face it because it's really hard that's really hard to face the reality of what's happening instead of trying to continue to tell ourselves that everything's fine and we don't have to um kind of rock that boat right and and then the addict will say everything's fine this is my problem we don't need we can just stay here hidden but truly what is hidden will not heal and so we have to be willing to dig in and to heal that which we really want to bury the most. And so that's what I wanted to share with you this week. And just understanding that the more we dig into that, the more we start to trust ourselves, the more we start to say, this is not my problem. However, I do need help in my healing. And being able to prioritize yourself and your healing is gonna be the game changer for you. Because likely if you have experience with your husband and pornography, whether it has escalated to outside marital affairs or not, you're experiencing trauma. And that's something I really struggled with when I started learning about betrayal trauma. I still had that narrative that said, but it's just porn. I felt like I was being a dramatic girl. And that again comes from, you know, some of the things we learn growing up and not to let those big feelings show and not to rock the boat and express those hard things because it makes people uncomfortable. And as I, as I started to learn that, that yeah, even though it's just porn and not an outside marital affair, it hurts abominably. It hurts my heart and I feel it in my whole body and it affects us on so many levels that I could no longer deny the fact that this was unacceptable in my marriage and I could not continue on this path and look in my future and say, if nothing changes five years from now, am I okay with that? No, I'm not because it's not just porn. And really it goes that for that across the board, it's like it's not even about the behaviors, whether it's pornography or extramarital affairs or gambling or whatever it is. If there's an addiction that creates hiding, it's about the lies and the secrecy. That far more outweighs any behaviors, um, at least for me and, and all, every one of my clients I've ever had. It's about the lies that do the most damage. So I just wanna leave that with you and I hope some of that helps. I'd love to hear what resonates with you. Um, and if you've ever felt any of those things, I'm just here to say you're not alone and there is help, there is, I've got groups that I'm putting together to where we can be in group with women, other women that can say and help acknowledge and validate that you're not alone. So you don't have to feel like you're the only one experiencing this because you're not. So I would love for you to come join us. We are in a private Facebook group. There's Live Like You Matter, Healing from Betrayal Trauma. 
I've also got an Instagram, Onita Offield, and my website, onitaoffield.com, and I offer free discovery calls so that you can be able to explore what coaching might be like and how it can help you. So I really hope to look um, to connect with you soon and have a great week. Bye-bye.